Well, howdy there, Internet people. It's Bo again. So today, we are going to talk about how policy shifts take time. How it takes time for policy to actually change. And we're going to talk about the current political climate and why maybe we should have a little bit more nuance when we're talking about big policy changes and why it is incredibly important to mark the small wins when there is a setback when it comes to a big policy change. And we're going to do this because a whole bunch of y'all asked the same question. And interestingly enough, it was a question I had before I made the video. And uh, I actually got the answer before making the video, but, well, we'll get there. So, in a recent video, we talked about how there is a piece of legislation in the Senate. And if it goes through, hedge funds won't be able to own single-family housing. Okay, And hedge fund means more than hedge fund. It's really just big investment entities. And they have 10 years to sell off the inventory they already have. If it was to go through, that's what would happen. That 10 years, when I heard that, I'm sitting there, I'm like, why would you let them profit off this for 10 years? But I didn't want to be like the person who sent me the message about how aid works and just not understand something and get super angry because of it. So I called a friend who understands a lot about economics. And as soon as he asked the first rhetorical question, I, I realized why it, they're giving him 10 years. I didn't include it in the video because honestly, I thought that was just a moment of me being like super dense and not picking something up. But all but you all had the same question. So here's your answer. I'm going to do it the same way he did it to me. If you have a whole bunch of something and you put it all on the market at once, what happens to the price? It drops, right? Supply and demand thing. It, it just drops. So if they were to, say, give them a year, all of those houses that they have in their inventory would come on the market at once. It would lower property values, which if you're trying to buy a house right now, you're probably like, yeah, do that. The problem is it would probably drop it below what it really should be, and more importantly, below what people owe, because it's going to drop other property values as well. So if somebody had already bought a house and now they have to move when they go to sell it, they're underwater. They owe more than they'll be able to get from it. So it ends up basically bankruptcies and foreclosures. It would create a housing crash. That's why they give them 10 years. It's that simple. Um, and yeah, I did. I like once it was explained to me, I was like, wow, that's really obvious. I feel, I feel dense for not having picked that up right away. But yeah, that's the reason. Okay, so big policy changes, they take time. In today's political climate, having nuance about anything, uh, well, it doesn't get clicks, you know? It doesn't drive traffic. You want to have that hard opinion. And because of that, people don't track the small wins. But sometimes those small wins add up real quick. I'll give you a good example. One of Biden's big promises, student loan forgiveness, right? Going to get rid of that student debt. $400 billion for 10 million borrowers. That was the plan. That was the big sell right there. And yeah, he did his part, pushed it through, went to the Supreme Court, got shot down. From that point forward, he failed on student loan forgiveness. He didn't do anything. Another broken promise, something like that. The thing is, there have been a bunch of small wins along the way. How, uh, how much 
do you think has been forgiven? What if I was to tell you the Biden administration has forgiven more student debt than any other administration in history? Like, by a lot. Like, it's not even close. When you're talking about big numbers, they become imaginary. Like, nobody knows what they would do with $400 billion, right? It's hard to wrap your mind around that much money. So let's do it a different way. I think most people can understand $100 million because most people understand a $1 million. So $100 million, $100 million. To get to a billion, that's times 10. Okay. To get to 10 billion, that's times 10 again. To get to 100 billion, that's times 10 again. You're still not to the level that has been forgiven. It was all done in little chunks. Nine billion here, three billion here, five billion this week. Um, and I want to say the grand total right now is 127 billion plus the five from this week, so 132, impacting three and a half million borrowers. The failure is, I mean, that's a pretty big chunk right there. But because we don't track the small wins, nobody talks about this. Nobody acknowledges that we are talking about more than a hundred billion dollars because it doesn't, the little numbers, they don't get clicks. Nobody really talks about it. Nobody cares unless you're, you know, in the 800,000 that that particular group, uh, what was impacted by it, that that particular section that got forgiven. You, you care about it then, but when it's done little by little, nobody really notices, which is why he's been able to do $100 billion worth because you're not getting a lot of pushback at $3 billion here and $5 billion there. Um, so what you have is a disconnect between the commentary and what's actually occurring. If, if Biden had came out and said that he was going to forgive $100 billion in student loan debt, um, the Republican Party would have lost their mind. There would have been no difference between the $400 billion and the $100 billion number. But saying that $400 billion number, the little bits and pieces, well, it didn't matter so much. They kind of, kind of just let it slide by. Policy shifts take time. And it doesn't matter what what policy you're talking about, what form of social change you are looking for, you have to take the time to acknowledge those small wins. If you don't, you will miss something major occurring. And you may even be opposed to somebody who did it because you didn't see it happen the way you wanted it to. More than $100 billion is huge. But because of the way commentators are, I would imagine that most people, A, don't know that that much has been forgiven, um, and B, probably feel like Biden, after it hit the Supreme Court, he didn't do anything else. That's not true. I mean, he, he's doing something this week. <laughs> There's another $5 billion that's being added to that total. And there will be more because that's how they're doing it. Doing it little pieces at a time. Um, it doesn't matter the calls that you care about. There are wins. 
taking a moment to acknowledge them. Not just does it help you have a more accurate picture of what's going on, it, it also helps motivate you and keep you in the fight. You don't become quite as cynical and feel like nothing will ever change because you get to see the little changes and those little changes add up real quick. Anyway, it's just a thought. Y'all have a good day.